UCLA 44, Hawaii 10, over overreaction time. Now, the line started to move back towards UCLA for this LSU game. We're not going to discuss the odds here because obviously we've got college football gambling shows that we got to dive into. But this was a trenches domination. This was this offensive and defensive game. line. Yes, it, it was. I, I fully expected Hawaii to win this. I, I lost my bet on this. I think Hawaii could win. I thought Hawaii would like, cover 17. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I got Hawaii at 18, and yeah. I thought, okay, Chip is okay. going to come out. I, when you vanilla. said win, I was like, I never yeah. thought they'd win. But by win, I mean Not, I meant not cover. getting beat by three scores, I thought was was well within I, my coverage. I meant cover the spread, but either okay. way. But no, I did not expect that I didn't have. No, it, it, was, it was UCLA I expected to come out super vanilla, not show anything, prep for next week. And, and I just, I whiffed. I whiffed on this one bad. Did you have the same feeling that I did? No, I did too. It, it, same reasoning too. I thought I thought UCLA wanted to be developed. But here's the other thing. This game didn't look anything like I thought. I thought Hawaii's all, Are we sure Todd Graham's good? Or has UCLA got a real defense? So here is a slight issue that Hawaii has been dealing with. Their, their COVID case count and whatnot has skyrocketed over the past like okay. month and a half. And I, I, I paid zero attention. And there are like a bunch of restrictions that are being put in place. They're not even allowing fans at the games in Hawaii. I knew, like I knew that. It, but, I, but I think it's actually affected the practice schedule a little bit. Like okay. I've been reading into some of that. Um, They're all and fits. I just missed it. Like One of two things happen. Either UCLA's defense looks better than I've ever seen any Chip Kelly defense in my life, which could happen. That We'll find out maybe next week if we get two weeks in a row of good defense. Or Hawaii's offense, there's something wrong there. Hawaii's offense, total EPA was negative 12.96. They They're, looked bad. It, they didn't score until garbage time. Oh, I yeah. think it was – they had a field goal, I think, early in middle in the third quarter after that. Yep. I mean, it, it was trash time before they put you in the end zone. Uh, Hawaii allowed 16 Havoc plays. I mean, it was it was the domination of the, the defensive line for UCLA and the offensive line. UCLA. Like, That's right. I, UCLA oh, no, the just, offensive line I kind of expected, though, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely think so. I, I knew um, UCLA was going to score. I thought it was going to be high scoring because I thought, hell, I had a team total over on Hawaii. I had, yeah, I mean, I thought Hawaii was going to put points up. So Dorian Thompson Robinson, the great. the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, look, look great when you know he's running the ball and, and this and that. And the issue though is his EPA per play was negative point oh six. Because he was nine out of nineteen for eighty six yards, no touchdowns, no picks. I that's not right. He he threw one touchdown, didn't he? I was about to say that that can't be right because yeah 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 he had he had one touchdown he had one touchdown. There we go. All right, so they they just had that one stat wrong. But it, it was the running game that that dominated for UCLA. Zach Charbonnet six carries, one hundred and six yards, and three touchdowns. I mean that's that's absurd. It was the running game that was able to to work. I mean they had just barely over a hundred yards passing. Like I, I, I just that's not going to beat you, uh, beat LSU, right? So, so no, while we're going to beat LSU, but, but I do think in in the Pac-12 South and in the Pac-12 in general, I do think that UCLA showed, hey, they have got a competent football team, and that's going to go a long way in the Pac-12. I do too. I, I think they're going to finish middle of the pack, maybe the upper end of the pack in in the South. There's a world where you know they might be better than USC and they can win the South. I don't know. The, the only issue a, is like they they've still got Utah in that division. They got Arizona State. But those are not, both, what like, I'm saying is guys. they're not going to be a doormat. Yes, they're exactly. not going to be a doormat. You're right. I think they're going to they're going to beat some of the Utah, Arizonas, and Arizona States and 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 USC's. I don't think they're getting beat by all three of those teams. I agree. I, I think there's going to be a little bit of a round robin there. They've earned that. They've deserved that. They've gotten to that point. I think where they're better. I, <laughs> I this game. I was off on this game as far as you can be off. Yeah, so, no, same here. I, I expected UCLA to put up 44 points. Now, that didn't shock me, okay? I thought this game would go over. It wasn't a play that I gave out, but I just I thought it would go over if you told me which one would I take. I But it's all predicated on I thought it was going to be back and forth. I thought Hawaii would be in this thing every second of the day. Maybe, you know, get down by 10, maybe get down by 14, but never any more than that and always had it kind of – Maybe a score behind, but but within striking distance kind of thing of never letting it get ugly. And it was middle of the second quarter, and you knew that was strong. Hawaii can't score. Hawaii can't move the offense. Hawaii can't move the football. They can't do anything. 
what do you think this means for Hawaii going forward? Are they? I think they. I think they. they, They're not going to be as in. They're they're not going to be in as much trouble in the Mountain West this year. Like they they have some games that are still winnable on their schedule and whatnot. I think UCLA is that much better than they are. Okay, but because it's such an early. Uh, game and because they're having apparently some practice issues and whatever else going on on the island. I'm like, curious if that changes things. And if you're and if you're them and you've got a couple of games, I mean, I don't know the athletic budget of some of these smaller athletic schools. Is it better for them to just like shack up some somewhere on I mean, the west coast the, the, and just stay mainland for I, a couple of yeah, weeks? I mean, I I probably would. Honestly, I, w- I mean, I would think that too. I would think mathematically, hey, it's got to be cheaper. It's got like we're got some funds, but come on, man, we can find a place to to put these guys and to let them stay here. That's just a little bit better. Are you, are you suggesting a bubble? Are you- <laughs> <laughs> I don't like using the word bubble, Gary. <laughs> we're going to get into a nomenclature <laughs> phrase here where it's not going to go well. No, I I do think that remember like their home field this year is like a, a miniature soccer stadium. It holds like thirty five hundred yeah. people. Like they they're having to do renovations on Aloha Stadium. But and they're all not that. letting people. They're not letting they're, people in anyway. They're so not this, even yeah. They're so not even letting st- people in. So just I, stay on the mainland, and now you're not bringing them back to the mainland with potentially you know the yeah. virus or anything else, and, and we're we're okay. Or bring them back to the island. Sorry. Yeah, I am. I am curious about this because Hawaii at least looked decent last year. Like they, I guess, yes. Their EPA per play, as far as rushing the ball, was really good. Was, they they played decent defense all year. Like they looked good. This they didn't look anything like I thought they were going to come out looking no. this year. Uh, but there, this also could be part of you know maybe maybe we need to be looking at some of these G five P five matchups. As like like they haven't seen P five athletes in two oh, years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, that's a that's a way of thinking about it that I haven't thought of yet. You're right. You're so, right. Yeah. Just I I don't know exactly what direction to go with it yet. I want to see interesting. I want to see what happens way. in week one. But that that's what I initially thought of was Hawaii hadn't seen anybody like some of these athletes in forever. UCLA brought in a ton of transfers, guys from. Alabama and and wherever else that that made massive plays in this yes. game and and they ain't seen guys like that. I mean, it's four and five. I do star think there's a world where UCLA is good. Yeah. If you if you told me right now, right now, I could have the ticket I could have had yesterday before the game on UCLA winning the Pac-12. I think I I think I'd take it. I think it, it now, was what was it like it, ten to one? I think. Yeah, it was ten yeah. to one. It was. Oh, it was it a ten to one to win the South. Yeah, I was about to say it had to be more than that to win, yeah, the, it was, win it was the Pac-12. 10 to 1 maybe to win Maybe it was 10 to 1 to win the South. I, I would take that all day. No, I don't think you're getting that today. Like, yeah. after this game, after you saw this, hell no, you're not getting that ticket. No, 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 you're not getting that one. You're not getting that. So, without seeing anybody else, I mean, USC might look like game busters. And it might be a thing where Hawaii's just really not that good because Hawaii's not used to playing Power 5 guys. And and all those things might be true. They looked more competent and capable than than. Any Chip Kelly team has looked since his days at Oregon. Yes. Yes. This was uh, efficiency and speed. Like, he finally is playing with the right pace and the right efficiency that he wants. And what did you, you think of what you think of the uh, the massive Bruins crowd there? I I did find it hilarious that there were more people watching Fresno and UConn in 120-degree heat than there were watching UCLA and, hang on, and Hawaii. Hang on, Fresno and UConn also had, like, an air advisory because of the forest fires, and yes. people were still – and more people <laughs> went to – the world is burning around them, and more people are like, I think I'll go watch that game than UCLA. Yes, I – I, it, it's absurd. I will tell you this. The amount of people leaving Baton Rouge right now for L.A. is – is is going to be massive? Oh, they they it, already had, left before the hurricane. Like they had they Ida had off. Ida not come in, I don't know that uh, maybe thirty percent of the people that are going to be in L.A. wouldn't have been there. But since you got to leave anyway, and you're about to get a check from the government for leaving, nope, no better place to go than follow follow, follow the, the tigers. tigers. <laughs> <laughs> That's just ridiculous. I, I'm not laughing at the hurricane. We're we're no. in this. We live in Mississippi. And hey, I just yeah, we'll be know. dealing with it. We will be dealing yeah. with it soon. So let's. By the way, I, obviously thoughts and prayers to everybody that is dealing with the hurricane. You know, we've been paying attention. It's a disaster. Like it, like it always is. 
And, of course, on the anniversary of Katrina on Sunday, I mean, it was just just ridiculous. So, you know, well wishes to everybody. Hopefully, everybody is staying safe and all that good stuff. And, you know, if you're listening to us, let us know how things are going. We would love to hear from everybody. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.